Economy Minister Rafizi Ramli does not expect any direct impact on Malaysian companies from the collapse of Santa Clara, California headquartered Silicon Valley Bank or SVB. The lender was the 16th largest by assets in the US prior to the crash and the biggest American bank to fail since the 2008 financial crisis. Rafizi said SVB's collapse isn't likely to have a major effect on Malaysian firms as no local company has deposits at SVB. VB. But if the collapse drags the US banking and the capital markets temporarily, he said, it might have some drags on domestic firms, though at a much smaller scale. The fallout from SVB has sent ripples across the world. In Britain, HSBC acquired SVB's local subsidiary for £1 in a last-minute deal with the UK government, overriding the Bank of England's decision to place SVB UK into insolvency and averting a crisis in the UK's tech and life sciences sector. On Sunday, Reuters reported that British startups backed by venture capital have around £2.5 billion, approximately 13.6 billion ringgit, largely in deposits, locked in SVB's UK subsidiary. The total includes over 300 companies with accounts at SVB UK, more than a third of which risk running into cash flow difficulty within a month if no solution was found for the ailing lender. State energy firm Petronas posted record highs for both its full-year profit after tax or PAT and revenue for FY 2022 on the back of elevated oil and gas prices. PAT came in at 101.62 billion ringgit, double the 50.87 billion ringgit it earned in the prior year, while top line jumped 51.33% year-on-year to 375.27 billion ringgit from 247.96 billion ringgit. Its downstream segment remained its core contributor, logging a revenue contribution of 174.84 billion ringgit in FY 2022, a 44.39% increase versus the 121.09 billion ringgit a year ago. It closed the year with a fourth quarter PAT of 24.4 billion ringgit, up 55.41% from 4Q FY 2021's 15.7 billion ringgit, as revenue rose 38.2%. 5% to 105.9 billion ringgit from 76.6 billion ringgit. Datuk Tengku Muhammad Taufik Tengku Aziz, Petronas's president and group CEO, noted that 2022 enabled the company to capitalize on oil and gas upsides, but it also signaled heightened supply demand volatility driven by sudden shifts in the market and an accelerated energy transition. He expects prices to correct this year. Defence Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Hassan called LTAT's voluntary takeover of a price of 85.5 cent per share for Bowsted Holdings fair, as it offers a very good margin. He was speaking after the announcement of LTAT's dividend. The minister highlighted the LTAT's offer was over 36% higher than the stock's close of 65.5 cent on the same day. Asked whether the Armed Forces Pension Fund's offer price is low, considering Bowsted's many prime assets, he said the high take-up rate is a reflection of a good offer. He also said there is a possibility of Bowsted being listed on Bursa Malaysia again in the future. Earlier, LTAT declared a dividend rate of 5% for 2022, with a total payout of 476.45 million ringgit. This is higher than the 4.1% dividend rate declared in 2021 and beat the previous total payout of 379.42 million ringgit. The fund declared its lowest ever dividend of 2% for 2018 after its net profit was halved following an investigative audit that revealed years of alleged mismanagement and irregularities. Prior to that, it was yielding a stable annual dividend of 6% to 8%.
ex-PM and PN chairman Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin was charged again for money laundering, this time involving 5 million ringgit. He pleaded not guilty to the charge of using his power as Besatu's president to receive the 5 million ringgit from illegal activities from Bukhari Equity on January 7, 2022. The sum was deposited into the party's M-Bank account. According to Companies Commission Malaysia Records, dated February 15, 2023, Bukhari Equity is a company 99% owned by tycoon Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar al-Bukhari, while the remaining 1% is held by Sharifah Zara Syed Kecik. The Pagoh MP was charged under Section 4, Subsection 1B of the Anti-Money Laundering, Anti-Terrorism Financing and Proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act 2001. For this charge, he faces a term of up to 15 years jail time and a fine of up to five times the amount of the illegal proceeds or 5 million ringgit, whichever is higher. The judge set May 26th for case mention. Burma's auto saw its latest quarterly earnings more than double, supported by a substantial backlog of orders for its vehicles. Third quarter FY23 net profit jumped 114.2% to 87.29 million ringgit from 40.71 million ringgit a year ago, while revenue grew 56.6% to 975.97 million ringgit compared with 623.13 million ringgit previously. Burmaz is engaged in distribution and retailing for the Mazda, Peugeot and Kia brands in Malaysia. It said its gross margin for its Mazda domestic operations improved due to the change in the composition of sales mix and the appreciation of the ringgit against the Japanese yen. It declared a third interim dividend of 4.5 cents per share. Moving forward, the company said the automotive sector will continue to face ongoing challenges such as shortages in the supply of microchips and components, delays in the supply of vehicles, tighter financial conditions, uncertainties in geopolitical conflicts and weaker global growth. Still, barring any unforeseen circumstances, it expects its performance to remain positive for the final quarter of FY23.